Hi guys, guess where I am? I am on a boat in a in the beautiful Brecon Canal flowing through the Brecon Beacons. It's it's absolutely amazing. If you ever get an experience to to be on a boat like this, it is wonderful. But anyway, I'm here to talk about history. Well, I mean, I didn't come on holiday to talk about history. I came on a romantic holiday with my beautiful wife, but right now I'm going to talk about history. Okay, so the Brecon Canal is named the Brecon Canal because it flows through the Brecon Beacons. Now the Brecon Beacons and the area of Brecon and Brecanioig in general is named after a historical figure from the 6th century called Brecon, obviously. So he is a very important character and I talk about him a lot in my book King Arthur, The Man Who Conquered Europe. Now the reason he's so important is because he's very helpful in establishing a few things about the chronology of the dynasty of this area. So uh, he was said to have been the son of a person called Tudric. Now this Tudric is not usually identified with the Tudric who was the martyr of, of uh, Tintern, the one who fought the Saxons at Tintern but then died after being mortally wounded. They're not usually identified as the same Tudric. Now the reason for that is because uh, the Tudric, who was the grandfather of Brecon, is normally said to have been born around about the middle of the 300s, because Brecon himself is considered to have been born around the year 400. Whereas the other Tudric, the Tudric who fought the Saxons at Tintern, is considered to have lived much later. So they're not usually considered to be the same Brecon, uh, sorry, the same Tudric. However, in the life of St. Cadoc, which is a record about Cadoc, the grandson of Brecon, so the great-great-grandson of Tudrig, it explicitly identifies the Tudrig, who is the great-great-grandfather of, of Cadoc, in other words, the grandfather of Brecon, with the Tudrig who fought the Saxons at Tintern. It explicitly identifies the two as the same Tudrig. So that is very significant. That's very significant because in my book, King Arthur, the Man Who Conquered Europe, I, de I identify Tudrig as the primary historical figure behind the character of Uther Pendragon in, the, uh, in Geoffrey of Monmouth's Historia Region Britanniae. And part of the evidence for that is seen in the almost identical stories of their deaths, the death of Tudrig and the death of Uther Pendragon. They're almost, almost identical stories. But that identification relies on Tudrig having died around about the beginning of the 6th century, which isn't when most people consider him to have been born, well, to have lived. Most people would place his life much later than that, by almost a century. However, in the, in the life of St. Cadoc, it explicitly identifies Tudrig, the grandfather of Brecon, so the great-great-grandfather of Cadoc, with Tudrig, the one who fought the Saxons at Tintern and died at Mathern. So that's very significant because the records actually indicate that there were two Brecons that have been combined, and that's seen from a, an examination of their children and when the children were born. And th this isn't just a, a fringe theory, this is actually found in Peter Bartram's A Welsh Classical Dictionary. There appear to have been two Brickens, one who was born about 400 and one who was born about 470, though I would say more like 480, but whatever, that's not a big difference. So if the genealogy was that of Bricken the first, born around about 400, that would indicate that the Tudrig, his grandfather, was born in the middle of the 300s. On the other hand, if the genealogy was of Tudrig the, the second, sorry, if the genealogy was of Brickham the second, born around 470 or 480, then that would indicate that his grandfather Tudrig, the Tudrig who fought at Tintern, was actually born around about, well, somewhere in the first half of the 400s, and that would place his death as an old man, because he was said to have been an old man, at the beginning of the 6th century, exactly fitting the chronology of Uther Pendragon. 
Now there's no, there's no inherent way of knowing which Brickham the genealogy is taken from because it's a combination, clearly it's a combination of two Brickhams, these records, it's a combination of two Brickhams. So there's no inherent way of knowing whether the genealogy found in those records is, is taken from the earlier Brickham or the later Brickham. Now it's assumed, pretty much consistently, it's assumed that this genealogy is the one of the earlier Brickham, but there is absolutely no basis for that. Now in my book, I explain why the more logical conclusion is that it's of Brickham the second. Now that being the case, that strongly, strongly indicates that the Tudrig who fought the Saxons and had a death story just like the death story of Uther Pendragon was in fact born around about the middle of the, or well, the first half of the 400s and therefore died at the beginning, the very beginning of the 6th century, exactly contemporary with Uther Pendragon. So that's why, well that's one of the reasons why Brickham is so important.